Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video three in my Hollybro Kakute F7 build. All the videos in this series are going to be neatly filed into one playlist for your convenience. Here's a look at the playlist of what we've got so far. In video one, we talked about the parts and the pieces and what to buy. And then in video two, we started with the frame and we soldered together our flight controller and our receiver. This video, we're going to continue the process. We're going to add our ESCs to the mix and our uh, ESC signal wires, as well as the motors. And just to reiterate one more time, as I did in the first and the second video, this is my first F7 build. So not intending this to be a how to video, but more of a follow along with me and see if I can get it done. Uh, chances are, if you're watching the video, then things were successful. All right. So at this stage, I am getting ready to hook up the, uh, power and ground to the ESCs. So what I'm going to do is for each of the little pads, I am going to pre-tin the pads, which means put a little dab of solder on there ahead of time. And then additionally, I'll put a little dab of solder on the wire ends so that when I go to solder them, it'll be much easier. So I'm going to do that for all eight connections. All right, so the ESCs that I chose for this build are the Emax Formula Series. They're uh, BL Heli 32s. And they should go nicely with the Kukute F7. So here I'm just cutting the length and then uh, pre tinning the wires. And I'm going to do that for all four ESCs. So I got to say that soldering is still my absolute least favorite part of the build and probably part of one of the most time consuming parts of the build for me, at least, uh, even though I've been soldering quads since 2011, uh, this is the only time I ever solder anything is when I'm working on quads. So it's, you know, I'm only doing it two or three times a year or whatever, whatever the case may be. But uh, I still stink at it, and the only thing that I can tell you is to be extremely patient. Uh, make sure that you tin everything ahead of time. Use 60-40 rosin core solder. Uh, Lead-free is a great idea, uh, but good luck with that. The other thing that I can make a recommendation on is um, I bought a whole bunch of these guys right here. Uh, this is a much older power distribution board. Uh, I bought... 20 of them for like two bucks uh, from Hobby King and uh, I was able to just use these things and practice soldering on these so that uh, I wasn't practicing soldering on a $50 flight control board. So just a thought there for you as I continue to muddle my way through the soldering process. All right, so here we are at a critical, critical moment. I will tell you that I spent a good solid 10 minutes off camera testing for continuity and making sure that I don't have any shorts in the system anywhere. Okay, at this point, it is a couple of days later. I am interrupting my own video uh, because I talked about that continuity testing and I don't recommend the continuity testing. Uh, if you notice the quad here is a little bit further along. It's been about 48 hours since I recorded what you just heard. Here's the deal. Uh, this is what's left of my smoke stopper. Uh, one of my dogs got to it and decided to chew it to oblivion. So when I was originally recording this, I just went ahead and said, Hey, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and do continuity testing and everything like that. And yeah, as an absolute last resort, that's something that you can do. This is a new smoke stopper. Um, I was too lazy to make another one. And, uh, so I just went ahead. It's got XT sixties and what are those XT thirties? I don't even know. So essentially this, this really is the only way to go either this or making your own. And at the point at which you're ready to go ahead and plug in your quad for the first time after you do all of that soldering, the only way to go is to take this guy right here, plug him in. And then essentially we're going to take our battery and we're going to plug it in here. See, that's what's supposed to happen. Okay. So now if I loop the circuit back around onto itself, uh, simulating a short circuit, this is all that'll happen. Okay. So it's nothing exciting. And that's the whole point is you don't want anything exciting to happen because the exciting thing that will happen is your board will, um, go poof and start smoking. And we definitely don't want that. 
So for a mere 11 bucks, amazing peace of mind here. You can also make your own for probably half that price. If you're interested in buying this one, uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below so that you can get it on Amazon and it can be delivered the next day. I now return you to the video as it was originally intended. So at this point, I am continuing with the soldering process and what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking the signal wires from the ESCs and soldering those to the flight control board. Um, there is some debate on the internet as to whether or not you need to solder the grounds from the ESC to the control board as well. Um, the vast majority of the people say that you don't with these newer boards, although there are some that say that you won't be able to do a BL Heli pass through if you don't ground the ESC correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the signal wires. I'm going to go ahead and solder them where they belong, and then I'll try a BL Heli pass through. And if everything works out okay, then I'll know I'm good. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and solder those black wires on as well. But for now, I'm just going to do the four signal wires from the ESCs to the flight control board. Okay, so at this point, all four ESCs are connected to the flight controller, and that includes the signal wire. I'm going to go ahead and solder the motors to the ESCs. Okay, so I got the motors all soldered up to the ESCs. I'm going to go ahead and wait to move the shrink wrap and apply it to the ESCs. There is a chance that I got the wiring backwards on a couple of the motors, uh, and that could be remedied in BL Heli. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this off right now, just in case I have any issues with the pass through uh, to BL Heli from Betaflight. I don't want to find myself in a situation where I've shrink wrapped everything and then I can't move wires back and forth. Essentially, the bottom line is you get a 50% chance on each motor. Um, two of these will most likely be right, two of them will be wrong, and what I'll need to do is I'll need to reverse any two of the wires on the ones that are wrong, and then the motor will spin the correct way. And that is remedied by one of two ways, uh, desoldering and resoldering, or in a piece of software called BL Heli. BL Heli will allow us to update the firmware on our ESCs, as well as change a variety of other settings. Generally, the only thing I do in BL Heli is, is update the firmware on the ESCs. And if I got, uh, if you, if you got a motor that's spinning the wrong way, uh, BL Heli actually has a way to allow you to flip it without having to desolder and resolder. Okay, so we have arrived at a good stopping point, but uh, you're definitely going to want to subscribe to the channel because in the next video, uh, we're going to bring in the TX16S and we are going to uh, bind uh, this quad to the TX16S and we're going to start, uh, we're going to add a new model and we're going to start taking this quad through its paces in beta flight. Beyond that, we're going to flash the ESCs in BL Heli, make sure our motors are turning in the right direction. And then at that point, we should be ready for a test flight. And if we get this thing flying good, uh, beyond that, we're going to add the camera and the uh, camera transmitter. And man, we're going to make this thing a full fledged FPV freestyle quadcopter. So do me a favor, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I hope that the video was beneficial to you. If it was, um, please do me a favor, share on social media and go out there and tell somebody. Because if you think flying on your own is amazing, wait till you bring in a friend. Bring a friend into the hobby because it just gets infinitely that much more fun when you fly with a buddy. All right, thanks for staying with me to the end. I'm Steve signing off until the next video. See you there.